Flight Boss, bitch. You know, for sure. You know, I listen to the mind of an Terry's Mill, Flight Boss, the Archangel Uriel, and I'm here to carry out God duties and motherfucker responsibilities. And right now, we're going to do an astrological flight revamp for 2018 for all my Virgos out there. Now, this is going to be Virgo on the flight shell. Virgo in a nutshell. You see what I'm saying? And once I break all these down, you're going to understand the basic archetype of Virgo and, what, and all their energetic influences and why they act the way they act. Now, this, let's start it off. Now, the, the star constellation and the stars and the influences itself was created by the sixth house. Now, what is the sixth house? The sixth house represents um, work, your job, or whatever you're working on, whether that's a t talent, gift, trade, or whatever like that, whatever you're working on. It's also dealing with schedule, routine, things you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's also dealing with the things that you criticize, whether that's a person, place, or thing, or yourself, and your ability to look at detail. So that's the sixth house. So all that energetic force is being forced into the archetype of Virgos. So this is why Virg this is ar this is energetic forces that art that uh, Virgos may play out in their lives. They may play out forms of uh, like liking to work or scheduling or routine or criticizing or looking at the details of something. So this is natural energies that they naturally have access to. You know what I'm saying? The house rules the signs. Remember that. Now, um, now Virgo is ruled by Mercury. Now what is Mercury? Thinking, communicating, and analyzing. Now, it's like a little bit exalted here also, but let's just say uh, it rules here. So, this what gives, this is another archetype and an energetic force that's, that's into Virgos. Virgos like to think, communicate, and analyze. So they may be very fast and quick to think. Maybe very fast and quick to analyze. Maybe very fast and quick to communicate. So a lot of times they may need to slow down right because being too fast can form into experiences of uncomfortability and, and experiences and experiencing uncomfortability can play out in vibrations of nervousness or worrying you know what i'm saying so let's keep mercury is very fast in gemini and in, in the air signs in gemini in, in the air signs in general but mercury works very fast in gemini and virgo I'm stumbling all over my goddamn words. Goddamn, this is the wrong video to do that on. Because I know y'all motherfucking Virgos going to be criticizing me. Like, goddamn, nigga, get your words straight. <laughs> all right, now, um, now, Jupiter is away. Now, when I say away, I like to say a planet is at work. It doesn't like to be there, but it has to utilize the tools that it has in order to get the job done. So, you know, Jupiter is in a place it doesn't really like to be at, but it's, it's, it's having to do things that it doesn't really wants to do in, in a nutshell. So what is Jupiter? Jupiter? Jupiter represents wisdom, knowledge, higher meaning and reasoning, and you get to have those through the experiences that you go through. And whether the experience was good or bad, it caused expansion. So Jupiter will always be a bit it always will be a beneficial. You know what I'm saying? Because whether the experience is good or bad, you're able to extract wisdom and knowledge out of it and place new meanings and reasons to things. So that's Jupiter in a nutshell. Now, it doesn't feel comfortable. It doesn't, it, it's not able to do what it, make it do what it do the way it, the way it can be comfortable and relax in Virgo. You know what I'm saying? It's not able to really do that in Virgo. Because, see, Virgo is, is all about uh, Earth, reality, practicality. You know what I'm saying? Virgo is more about scheduling, routine. You know, it's all about um, criticizing, looking at the details. And Jupiter don't really care about details. Jupiter don't, don't really care about work. Jupiter don't really care about shape and form. You know, Jupiter is all about wisdom and knowledge and experiencing. So Jupiter just wants to experience. You see what I'm saying? Jupiter wants to have the meaning and reasoning behind something. You know? And a lot of times when you think about work, and what you're working on and health and routine and scheduling and things that you're criticizing when you look at the meaning and reasoning behind it you can you you kind of come to the realization that damn this ain't shit you know what i'm saying yet there's meanings yet there's reasons why you still get up and go to work there's meaning there's reasons why you still schedule you still do things on a routine there's reasons for them 
but the the like the broad higher meaning to them may not mean shit. So you see, Jupiter doesn't. So Virgos may play out this characteristic in their life because Ju Jupiter is away here. So just as the natural archetype of Virgos, they may not want to hear all your philosophical points of views all the time. They may not want to hear. Uh, they may not necessarily want to hear a lot of wisdom and knowledge and 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 stuff that's not taking shape or form. You know what I'm saying? They, if you can tell them how does it work, how does that practically work? Oh, you went to school, you learned all this. How does this practically take place in your life? Oh, you got all this wisdom and knowledge. Oh, you need to do something with this. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's more on that basis. Um, also, when it comes to uh, the, the the little dilemma right here. Um, it's all about experiences also now Jupiter I mean not Jupiter but Virgos like to plan schedule because they got that en energetic force uh, filled from the sixth house so with them planning and scheduling that's like pre-assuming something or planning out something and expecting something to happen based upon the plan based upon what's supposed to be on schedule what's on task see Jupiter is about experiencing so Jupiter don't really care about scheduling something so right here uh, this why Virgos may naturally play out the energetic forces of being nervous at times or worrying because when you are experiencing there's always going to be a sense of something not going along well something not going towards schedule or not going towards how it's supposed to go or and then this will makes so it's a gift and a curse to that this will make Virgos very good at taking care of things and making sure things is is situated so you don't have to feel nervous or how or have to feel uncomfortable when you're going and and because you know that something is on schedule is on time or you're going to be on schedule on time right but the curse is things may not always play out that way so you may play out as a worrier to others and things of that nature so you know it's, it, it goes deep into a lot of different ways but for the most part um you know jupiter being the way here can can make a, a virgo want to cut off and have lack of experiences due to not planning or due to not scheduling and things of that nature. So when you're around a person who's free and a person who wants to do things on the spirit of the moment and a spontaneous type person, this may make a this may make a Virgo uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Or this may or on the flip side, this may make a Virgo feel like this is the type of person that they may need to help and create some type of shape or form or structure in this person's life and help them. You know what I'm saying? Things of that nature. To the point that your help will will only be seen as criticism to this person, but you will look at yourself as being a good friend. See, see, Virgos may play that out also. Now, um, let's step into Neptune. Neptune is also a way. You know, I said Neptune is at work. So what is Neptune? Neptune is dreams, illusions, creativity, imagination, fantasy realm, your spiritual limits, mysticism. So it's a way here. So it doesn't do well here either. Because that's also the subconscious realm, the, the dream world, your imagination, fantasy, and, and creativity and things of that nature. A lot of times, this may be seen as an illusion. So Virgos may play out this archetype. They may see, they may see others who are too far into dreams, creativity, imagination. And they, they may look at these people as forms of them being in some form of an illusion. Because if you're not taking... If you're not showing a Virgo a shape and form on what you're trying to create, it's going to look at, it's going to be seen as an illusion. It's going to be seen as a person not being practical, a person not living in reality in some way, shape, or form, a person who is not looking at the details, who are not criticizing their circumstance, their reality. So a Virgo will look at a person like that because Neptune is a way in Virgo in general. So this, this, all this is building on to the archetype of a sign. You see what I'm saying? So it don't matter if you have Neptune in Virgo or you just a Virgo in general. This is type of this is the type of energetic influences that you have. Also, you know what I'm saying? It's like Neptune. Neptune likes to co connect with the collective conscious. It likes to think about mysticism and things of that nature. It does, but it can't really do that in Virgo because Virgo is going to be detective and, and it's going to want to dig research and learn. And learn the reality of these mysticisms and these and these imaginations and things of that nature. And if Vir and if a Virgo can correlate it to reality in some type of way, then it's a go. But if it can't, then then the uh, Virgo will ver verbally smash it. Will verbally put 
create a firmament in their mind to make sure that it builds a shield that that for that fuck shit and imagination and that shapeless formless realm don't attack them anymore. You see what I'm saying? Now, um, also Venus falls here. Venus falls. So when I say a planet falls, I like to say asleep. So when a planet is asleep. It do the same thing you do. So it can have nightmares, or it can have beautiful dreams, or if it can, it can have regular dreams. So a beautiful dream would be like you being able to do something that you never thought you you can do, you can do before. But the the moment that you actually went through with that and did it, right? You proved to yourself that you that you had an energetic force that all you had to do was tap into that. But you never knew you had that because you you might have been doubting. But you tried it. That's a beautiful dream. You see what I'm saying? Now, the nightmare will be self-doubt, will be worrying too much, will be not being sure of yourself or not being sure if you can do this or not. So that will be the um, the nightmare. And then the regular dream is like, okay, you're kind of utilizing this energetic force the same way everybody else does, but you have your days. Now, Virgos are doing this with Venus. So what is Venus? Venus is love, appreciation, value, how you relate to others, the things you're willing to compromise with. And the things you're willing to compromise with could take you into bad habits, which you start overindulging and start to experience circumstances and situations that lead you to understand that you're supposed to do things in moderation. So for the most part, uh, when it comes to Venus, Vir Virgos can have nightmares, beautiful dreams, or regular dreams, but it's extreme like that. You see what I'm saying? So what do I mean by that? So here's a beautiful dream for uh, for for Virgos right here. You know what I'm saying? Now a lot of times when a Virgo step into their bad step into their bag and overexpress love, appreciation, value, and relativeness and compromising and things of that nature and relativeness, then they end up being able to do or see things or accomplish things that they never thought they could accomplish before. You see what I'm saying? But the nightmare and what they naturally play out first a lot of times is they never see the love, appreciation, value. It's hard for them to see it because it's sleep. You can't, it's, it's, it's unaware. You see what I'm saying? So you, it's hard for Virgos to see love, appreciation. It's, it's hard for Virgos, Aries, and Scorpios, but it's really hard for Virgos, you know what I'm saying, um, to see the love. So a lot of times they don't see they off the back don't feel or see love appreciation value and relatedness and compromise compromising so they place what they will value into things that's not worth valuing or to things that they rather value you see what i'm saying and a lot of times they a virgo archetype sometimes they may feel like that they have they have to over express their love appreciation of value to others because that may be the only way that they can get it because they already they already feel lack of so it may play out to in others lives like it may play out into the into the person life that you are relating to as you being too forceful or you loving the wrong things or you being too critical or things of that nature and this is not love and this is this won't feel like love to them but you feel like that's how you express your love because you don't even you don't have love in your life. You the energy itself. That's what you have to understand. So um, you know, yeah, Venus falls here. It's sleep. So you know, a lot of times you feel like you have to overexpress love to get it, and then a lot of times you feel like there's no love there anyway. So there's no point of expressing love. Let me go ahead and value my the things I critique and what I criticize and look at the details. Therefore, I will always be right and won't have to experience being wrong in the first place, and won't have to go through that worry. See what I'm saying? Now, Earth. Earth is exalted. The Earth, yeah, the star that we're on right now. Earth is exalted in Virgo. It rules Taurus. It's exalted in Virgo. It's away in Scorpio. It falls in Pisces. Now, what is Earth? Earth represents growth, nourishment, caring, stability, scheduling, also stableness, and having fixated ways of, of creating stableness and stability and comfortability in, your, uh, in life and in general. Um, so that's what Earth represents. So it's exalted in Virgo. So this will play out in Virgo's lives as um, now when a planet is exalted, it can over exhaust itself in that energy. So it can make itself tired. It's like a kid at Disneyland or, or an adult in a place that it always wants to be at. So when you look at um, scheduling or routine or shape and form or fixated nature and, and um, you know, growth and caring and nourishment and things of that nature it's exalted in Virgo so uh, right here it gets to do 
everything it ever wanted to do, but it can overexhaust itself too. It can care too much about uh, schedule, practical, you know what I'm saying, health, routine. It can overexhaust itself, especially with uh, Mercury rule in Virgo. Mercury is how you think, communicate, and analyze. So, so this is your mind, and if something exalts it, this is always on your mind. So what's always on your mind, you're constantly thinking about health, routine, scheduling, uh, shape, form, being fixated, creating foundation, uh, caring, uh, growth. You know what I'm saying? In, in some way, shape, or form. So this is what makes uh, Virgos worry about these things, worry about staying on task, worry about scheduling, worry, and, and it play on their nerves a lot of times. But this would this would gives them the a motherly energy over these things. You see what I'm saying? Because the care energy there, so they care. So and they nerd and they nourish those energies. So a lot of times, I don't care if you're a male or a female, you carry out you you carry this this motherly energy towards um, towards Earth type. Earth type things as far as uh, scheduling and health and routine and um, and and things of dealing with shape and form uh, and this that and the third. This is the things that you overly care about, so you can over exhaust yourself to the point that you you just seem tired and overboard and over over excited about from others. Or a lot of times these are things you like to nurse as like a womb and care and like to see things grow out of the earth like aspect. You see what I'm saying? So keep that in mind. Also, um, we want to get to um, now. Now, Earth, Virgo is ruled by the Earth element in general. So the Earth element is thinking and being practical, right? Now, Virgo is mutable. Mutable is being mutable, being able to adapt. That means changeable. Being changeable, being able to adapt to your own or other people's ways. Now, all mutable signs come to broad perspective. They come to broad conclusions relative to their element. This one is Earth right here. So, Virgo comes to, they are mutable and changeable and, um, to their, and willing to adapt to their own and other people's ways of thinking and being practical. Which is uh, like to come to broad conclusions of how to make sense out of things and how things work in general for everybody as a collective conscious. You see what I'm saying? Now, it's also uh, left brain. Now, um, now, and this this also dives into criticism and things of that nature also. Because when a mutable earth, earth is thinking and being practical. You know what I'm saying? And making sense out of things. Mutable is adapted to your own and others. So this is what makes Virgo smart, but maybe over analytical at times. Because not only are they looking at the details of themselves, but they're also seeing how other people think and be practical. And how other people get things working. And how other people come. And then they see how they do it, look how their own selves do it, and come to a broad conclusion on how it's supposed to be done and how it works in general. So they like take the clock apart and see how everything tick and talk and stuff like that. So, you know, it can lead into two different ways. Now, um, it's left brain. The Virgo sign is left brain. So when we're dealing with the left brain, what is left brain? Left brain is dealing with log logical things and, um, you know, rationality. And then it's yin. What is yin? Yin is going within the internal realm, going inside. You see what I'm saying? So when you put these two together right here, that's the left brain. Cause look, uh, everything has a yin and yang. That's why you even have two sides of a brain, two halves of a fucking cashew. You know what I'm saying? Two halves of a cashew and everything. So uh, with the left brain, you have a yin, and, uh, you have a yin and yang. Also, the left brain, you have the yang signs, which would be uh, air and fire. Um, but the yang of the left brain, which will be air. The yang of the right brain is fire, but the yang of the left brain is air, and the yin of the right brain is uh, earth. The end of the yeah, the yin of the left brain. The yin of the left brain is earth. The yin of the right brain is water. Now, earth signs uh, and Virgo in general right here is the yin version of the left brain. So the yin is going within. Yin is going within and into the internal realm. The, the like the the behind the scenes realm that? and um and things of that nature and then the left brain is dealing with the logical the rational and also the yang realm you see what i'm saying so when you break down earth and then virgo in general here's what's happening why the fuck does have to do this now here's what's actually happening what's actually happening here is a person who's taken outside 
influences, which is the logical shapes and forms that we're seeing from an external point of view, and internalizing it, coming to practical conclusions, and, and making sense out of it from the internal realm before expressing it. Where this can get a lot a little loose lip a lot faster than the other two earth signs because of because Mercury here. But at the same time it does the same thing. It takes the shape and forms that it sees from the external realm and internalize it. See what come to practical conclusions. What do these things really mean? How how do a person really think about these things and how to practically make these things work and then present it so this this would create reservedness and conservativeness within the earth signs in general and then last but not least it's um it's backed and supported by the leo uh star constellation now what i mean by that is the area time and location and the space that made you a Virgo in the time that you was born that made you a Virgo that space and location the stars of Leo is in that space right now and it has been for some time now so uh, what does that mean that mean that everything I just explained as you being a Virgo is backed and supported by the star lights and the illusions of the Leo stars so what does that mean um, now everything I explained as you being a Virgo let's look at it like this you're mutable and you're changeable and able to adapt to your own and other people's ways of thinking and being practical right now that's being backed and supported by your own fixated way of seeing and feeling about the world and the circumstances that you're in and also you being able to gain attention or be seen or to you to t or for you to take action and pay attention to these things or for others to be consciously to be consciously aware of what you're doing so just look at it like this. The sun, your actions, the way you act and how you see things, what you're consciously aware of and what the world is consciously aware of and of actions and, and viewpoints, right? And then fix and then being fixated on your own way of seeing and feeling, which is your intuition, your imagination, your creativity. And that's that's backing, supporting, and your way of seeing and feeling about things, that's backing and supporting your mutable way of being able to adapt to your own and other people's ways of thinking and being practical about these same experiences. And that's Virgo in a nutshell. Flight boss, bitch, goddamn. Air, ee, -hee.